Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for these. We have been solving these math problem out of this book here, the official study guide for these, 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll solve some problem that you will find on page number 158. On page 158 you will find some percentage problems. Uh, the problem is that the problem is that in the book there are three problems, three examples that they give you on page 158 and then there are five problems that they give you on the next page. Altogether a grand total of eight. If you feel that that is not enough and that you want to practice some more with the percentage problems, on my channel you will find a series of video labeled as basic math. It's called basic math because that's exactly what it is. It's a series of 100 videos. Just type in my name. Anytime you're searching for any math concept, always put in my name first because otherwise of course you're going to get thousand different hits. Always type in my name. Type in Kishwani, basic math, day 33. And from there you will find a sequence of videos from 33 to, through 40, all dealing with percentage problems. You don't have to do all of them because of course they get more difficult as the number goes higher but do at least the, but, but do at least the first two three days. Do you understand? Let's get going. On page 158 there are three examples that they give you. We're going to label them as A, B and C. So here's the first one. A, it says, it says 15% of flights were delayed. We also told that we had a total of two hundred and twenty flights. We had a total of two hundred and fifty uh, twenty flights at the airport on a given day, and we are told that out of that, they expect about fifteen percent to be delayed. <coughs> Question is, based on this information, how many flights? <coughs> excuse me. Can we expect to be delayed? Excuse me one second. Let's take a look at it, shall we? Well we know we know 10%, 10% of 220, 10% of 220 should be 22. 10% simply means one tenth, one tenth of one tenth of 220, 10% is one tenth. So if you take 220, you divide take one tenth of it, it's 22. That's 10%. If 10% is 22, that implies that 5% of 220 should be half of that, which is 11. There you go. We wanted 15%, we found 15%. We simply add them up. If 10% is 22 and 5% is 11, then 15%, 15 percent, 15 percent of 222 must equal the sum of the two numbers, 33. We expect about 33 flights to be delayed. That's all. Number, number B. Example B. It says we're going to buy something. We are going to buy something. I don't know why I can't write. We are going to buy something for sixty dollars plus eight percent tax. Plus, we're going to pay 8% tax. The question simply is, how much are we going to pay altogether? Before we, before we can worry about how much we're going to pay altogether, first we've got to figure out what 8% of this price is, 8% of 60 years. Let's find out, shall we? So we want to find out 8% of 60. What, the, what does the word percent mean? What does the word percent mean? Percent means the word percent literally means per 100. So 8% means 8 out of 100. Off means times 60. Divide top and bottom by 10. If you divide top and bottom by 10, the zero is going to drop out. And on the top, you end up with 8 times 6 is 48. And on the bottom, you end up with 10. 48 divided by 10 is 480. That's what we're going to pay for the tax. And of course, we have to pay the price, $60. So we're going to pay a grand total of 
you're going to pay a grand total of about $65, $64.80 to be precise. Let's look at next example C. Example C. C says that we're going to buy something. We're going to buy something where the full price is $140. $140. Lucky for us, is being sold at 30% discount. The question simply is, what is the discounted price? Let's find out, shall we? It's the same idea that we did before. If we know the full price, 10% 10, 10 of anything is just one-tenth of the amount. Whatever the amount is, you take one-tenth of it, divide that amount by 10, and it will get at 10%. So here we know, Full price is 140. If full price is 140, which means uh, the 100 percent of the price is 140, that implies that implies that 10 percent, 10 percent must be 14 dollars. Just drop the zero, one tenth of it. We're not interested. We're not interested in learning what 10 percent of that amount is. We want to find out what is 70 percent of that amount. Why 70 percent? Because it's discounted by 30%, if it's discounted by 30%, then what we are essentially paying is 70% of that amount. Because you don't have to pay 30% of the price. So we know 10% is this. We're not interested in 10%. We want to find out what 30% is, or what 70% is. But well, it's very simple. Just multiply both sides by 7. Just multiply both sides by 7 and you're done. There you go. Voila. Now we have 70%. All we have to figure out is what is... All we have to figure out what is is what is 14 times 7. Well, we know we know 10 times 7 is 70, and 4 sevens are 28. There you go. Looks like we're going to pay 98 dollars. We're going to pay 98 dollars. Now, if you didn't understand just now what we did here, 14 times 7, you see this 14, this 14 that you see here, can very easily be written as 10 plus 4, which is why it's called 14. And then we have times 7 which is same as 10 times 7, there you go. This, is, this, this one is not a 1, it's a 10, it's a 10 digit. This one is a 10, it's a 10 digit, it's 10 and a 4. 10 times 7 is 70, and 4 times 7 is 28. 10 times 7 is 70, and then 4 times 7 is 28, and there you go. That was part C. That was part C. That's the end of that page. On the next page, we have five more problems. Let's at, let's at least knock out a couple of them, shall we? Let's just knock out a couple of them in this video. So that in the next video we don't have to do all five of them together. So now we are on page number 159. Practice problem number one. We are told that our current salary is fifty-five thousand. We are further told, we are further told that we just got four and a half percent raise. The question simply is, what is the new salary? What is the new salary? That's all. Let's find out, shall we? Before we go into it. Before we can go into it, can you tell me what is what is one percent of one hundred? Well, if you want to find one percent of one hundred, you just knock out the two zeros. One percent of one hundred is one. Can you tell me what is one percent of three hundred? Well, one percent of three hundred is just three. Just knock out the two zeros. Can you tell me what is one percent of nine thousand? Well, if you want to find one percent of nine thousand. Knock out two zeros. One percent of nine thousand is ninety. Just knock out the two zeros, and you will have one percent. If you just knock out one zero, you will have ten percent. If you just knock out one zero, that's one tenth of it. If you knock out two per 
two zeros, you're looking at one hundredth of it. One hundredth of something is one percent. We do understand that concept, right? All right, now we can begin this story. So here we want to find out four and a half percent. Four and a half percent. Well, we know we have 55,000. We know that one percent, one percent of 55,000 would have to be, well, let's find out, shall we? 55,000, 55,000. And if you want to find 10 percent, you will knock out one zero, and that's 10 percent, 5,500 is 10 percent of 55,000. If you want to find one percent, you knock out two zeros. 1% is 550. There you go. 1% is 550. We're not interested in finding out 1%. We're not interested in finding out 1%. We want to find out what is 4.5%. If you can figure out what 4.5% of 55,000 is, we can take that amount, 4.5% of 55,000, add it back to 55,000, it will give us our new salary. So let's find out, shall we? So that's 1%. Let's add another 1%. That's 2%. Let's add another person, another one percent. Well, we have to three percent. Let's add one more percent. That's four percent. And now we have to figure out half a percent. Half a percent of fifty-five thousand would be half of that amount because if five hundred and fifty, if five hundred and fifty is one percent, half of five hundred and fifty should be half a percent. Half of five hundred is two fifty. Okay, stay with me. In this story is very important. Half of 500 is 250, and half of 50 is 25. So 250 plus 25 would be 275. So what we are essentially doing is that if you had to figure out half of half of 550, don't try to do it together 550. Break it up, half of 500 and then half of 50. Half of 500 is 250, and half of half of 50 is 25. All we have to do is add them up. That's it. All we have to do is add them up. Let's do this, shall we? So that we get a 5, and you get a 20 plus 7 is 27, 7 carry 2, and these, so these are 20, these are 5, 4, 5, that's 20, 4, 2, 4, there you go. So that's the amount of raise that we get. So our new salary, our new salary would have to be 55,000 that we were getting before, and $2,475 of raise giving us a grand total of 57,475. Let's do the next one, shall we? Number two. Number two says 35% of 900. 35% of 900. Let's see what the actually problem actually says. I, I didn't write down the whole thing. Well, that's what it says. It says which of the following is 35% of 900. Hold on. So that's, that's, that's very simple. It's very straightforward to set it up. There are two, there are a couple of ways we can go about it. We'll do it both ways. Let's, let's, do, let's do a couple of ways. One way is to set it up as it is written here. As it is written here, 35% means more than 100. So, so far we have 35% of means times and 900. There you go. So, if you wanted to read this thing, it is read as 35%. Why percent? Because bottom is 100. If in the bottom, if in the bottom, if you had something, if, if in the bottom, if you had anything other than 100, then we can't use the word percent. But because it's what bottom in the 100, 35% of means times. 35% of 900. Let's find out, shall we? Divide top and bottom by 100. If you divide top and bottom by 100, 100 is going to go away and 900 becomes 9. So it's just 35 times 9. That's all it is. Nothing to it. 9, 5 is a 45. Carry 4. 9, 3 is a 27. Plus 4 is 31. Voila. That is, that amount represents 40, that amount represents 35% of 900. Another way we could have done it, another way we could have done it is this way. Just realize that 10%, 10% of 900, as I said, 10% you just knock out one zero. 10% of 900 would have to be 90. If 10% is 90, then 30% would be three times that amount, which is 270. That's 30%. We want 35%. So let's do one more step. And for one more step, we have to look at this part. We know, we know 10% of 900 is 90. 
We know that, right? Well, if 10% is 10% is 90, then 5% would have to be 45. Half of 90. So this amount represents 3%, this amount represents half a percent, the sum would represent 3.5%, which is exactly what we want. Oh, 35% rather than that, not 3.5%. This amount represents 30%, this amount represents 5%, so it will represent 35%. I wonder, I wonder what this is going to add up to. Do you wonder that too? Me too. We have a 5, 7 plus 4 is 11. That's three. What do you know? This is spooky. This is very spooky indeed. On that note, on that spooky note, we're going to call it a day. I'll see you tomorrow. If you wish to get hold of me, simply send me an email at kashwaniprep at icloud.com or you can visit my website kashwaniprep.com. Alright? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.